Let's take a look at the relationship between x and z. So we can actually start with x, and I'm just going to draw an x-axis with a normal curve, just a sketch, as good as I can do. And um, let's use some numbers, like we have a mean of 120 millimeters and a standard deviation of 5 millimeters. So traditionally what we do is on our axis, we have our mean, that's got to be right in the middle, and then we go out three standard deviations on either side because that really gets us to where this curve is very small, that area starts to get very small. So if you want to find that first tick mark, that first standard deviation, look for where the curve flattens out. Depends a little bit on your drawing, your sketch, but it's typically close to the half the height. So if you kind of draw a line halfway up, trace it down, that's a good kind of ballpark guess. So that's the first standard deviation. I'm going to have 120 in the middle, or just mu. And then to go over by one, I'm adding that five to, to the next tick mark. And you'll see that in symbols as mu plus sigma. So two standard deviations, I'm adding five twice or adding 10. It's gonna take me to 130. It's the same as mu plus two sigma. And then lastly, 135 is mu plus three sigma. And on the left, we subtract one standard deviation two standard deviations, and three standard deviations. So 115, didn't leave myself room here, 110, and 105 going to the left. So Z is going to scrub all the information out. We have Z means that the mean is zero, and the standard deviation is 1. So if you actually substitute 0 and 1 in up here, you get 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 2 times 1 is 2 and 3. And then over here, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So all the Z means is it's uh, just measuring how many tick marks you went over to the right or left. And then we can contextualize that by converting it back and so on. So that's that's the side-by-side -side look of what an x-axis would look like. We have to have some kind of context there. This one, even I could go further, that's in millimeters. And then z has no units, no context. It's just like a counting tool, how many standard deviations over you go. So let's look at two points. One of them I'm going to do uh, 132, x of 132 millimeters. And then I'm also going to look at um, one that's given in terms of z. This one's going to be z equals negative 1.15. So there's a, actually kind of the same type of problem, but we're converting either this blue one, I want to convert from x to z. And in the green one, I want to convert from z to x. So the negative 1.15 would register in down on this z-axis, even though I wrote it up there, um, and we want to convert that to x. So let's start with the blue one. We have x equals 132. We want to know what z is. The formula for finding z is x minus mu over sigma. In other words, um, we want to know how far away our point is from the mean. And then we want to divide it by the width of a standard deviation. So keeping in mind, we have the same values as before. I would have 132 minus 120 divided by 5. That's 12 over 5, or 2.4. So that would be my z, 2.4 standard deviations, since it's positive, to the right. So you can count the tick marks, one, two, and then four tenths of the way. Now I convert my um, z, I had a z of negative 1.15, and I want to know what's the x for that. The other formula that I can use is mu plus uh, z times sigma. And there you just need to multiply first. So 120 plus negative 1.15 times 5, 
If I multiply first, that's negative 5.75. And that's going to equal out to 114.25 for my x in millimeters. So we can count that one too. If I go 1 and 15 hundredths of a standard deviation to the left, so 1 and 15 hundredths, so you can see it's 1.15 on the z scale, it's 114.25 on the x scale. That is how we convert between x and z. In Staplet, we can get a hand with the blue version, but not the green version. Here's what I mean. If I set up my curve, you can see it draws it the same way. If I put in a left or right of 132, it will output the Z. It doesn't matter if I point it left or right, it's just going to shade the other side. So it either shades the small side or the big side, depending. But it does output the Z. But there's no way to do it the other way around. If I have a Z score, I can't type it in and convert it to a value. Um, so that's the, the one in green where you have some of those um, on the homework because it's something that Staplet will not do.